Hi everyone, welcome back to Final Film and part three, episode three of my Last of Us reactions to uh, series one. And we are up to episode three, like I've just mentioned. This is Long Long Time, directed by Peter Hoare, who is known for uh, It's a Sin, the Channel 4 series that uh, came out, I believe, last year, not 2021. And I thought it was a very apt choice of director for this one. Very, very intrigued when I saw his name come up. Uh, into what this was going to do to the sort of narrative of this episode, I think it was very apt and again very sort of justified as to as to what we get in this episode. So hopefully you've seen the episode now because if you haven't, you're you're in for spoilers now. So I recommend going back and watching the episode. Uh, if you've not yet gone back and watched the reactions to episode two and episode one, they're on the channel as well as the spoiler free preview of the whole season, and these are going to carry on throughout the rest of the episodes. So straight away intriguing opening because we don't get a cold open this week we we started episode one with a cold open with john hannah and the the sort of 1960s tv show discussion about cordyceps and about fungi and about all this sort of foreshadowing that was taking place episode two infected had that cold open of the the academic going in and sort of saying you know why are you showing me cordyceps in this particular setup it looks like you know this would be uh, if it had infected a human and this said, well, it has infected a human, et cetera, et cetera. This time we don't get a cold open. We go straight into that brilliant title sequence. So in a way that kind of set things up a little bit, it was, you know, when I saw, when I saw the series the first time through, I didn't really think much of it, but now having sort of seen everyone's reaction to the cold open for the first one and the second one, Going into this one without one was very interesting because it was almost like right we've 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 done that now we're just going to focus on the narrative. So we kick off with Joel and Ellie. Now they are ten miles outside of Boston. Joel is very much still frosty towards Ellie. Um, I think at this point he's definitely grieving Tess, but he's not sort of showing it. There's a there's a bit at the beginning where he's sort of in solitude on his own. Uh, by the river collecting rocks and then he goes back to Ellie, he has something to eat and he sort of begrudgingly throws her something as well, because at, at the end of the day he's kind of promised Tess that he's going to look after her um, we move forward, there's there's quite a lengthy sequence and I think one that I don't want to necessarily say might test people who are watching it, but I think if you're here for the sort of action packed, you know nature that some sequences and some set pieces are going to give you the sort of restrained, pulled back, very conversation-led piece. Is it might throw you a little bit, but I really enjoyed it. I think that it's it's all it is doing is it's building the characters of Ellie and Joel. It's building their relationships as well. We're getting to know a little bit more about Ellie's sort of inquisitive nature. At the end of the day, she's a kid who's been born in this pandemic. She's but she's a kid after the infection. So she's like when they get to the crash site, she's seen a plane. She knows what a plane is. She's never been on a plane before, you know. And then we'll we'll get to it towards the end of the episode, but she's never been in a car before. So all of these things, she's got so many different questions. Joel, perhaps right now, isn't the best person to be answering those questions or for her to be fielding these questions too, because he's still shut off. He's still sort of, he's very much wearing his grief on his on his arm. You know, he's, he's sort of on his sleeve, I should say. He's sort of just trying to get through as best as he possibly can do. Uh, we we end up at a uh, sort of like a garage or a store or something like that, and Joel says that he stashed some things there. Ellie naturally, again, because she's inquisitive, goes and has a bit of a look around. She comes across an infected in the basement who is pinned by some rubble, uh, and this is Ellie's first kill, technically, I suppose. Um, and, you know, that kind of it gives us a sort of, the feeling that, you know, is, is she capable of that? Is she more capable of moving on to that? Uh, Joel gets into a conversation to her. And then the main crux of the narrative of this episode starts. And this is where we throw back to 2003 and we meet Bill. Now, Bill is a character who is very much from the game. Uh, you, you play as um, Joel predominantly at the beginning of the game. And you're walking through and you're trying to get to what we what he refers to as Bill's town. And you end up sort of knowing that Bill's around or meeting Bill through Bill's traps in the first instance. In that, you know, a zombie walks around a corner, it triggers a trip wire. You then have to try and like unhook these trip wires in order for you to make it around the town to eventually get to Bill. 
there's a lot of changes here from the source material and changes that I must admit, after watching this episode for the second time, I am very, very fond of. I think this episode is up there with one of the the single best episodes of TV that I've ever seen. Now, I love the series as a whole. This is very different to the two episodes that have come before. You're introducing two characters to us, Bill and Frank, who I will come to in a minute. It's extremely well written. It is extremely well performed. Very solid work by Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett here. And to get us to, in, in that sort of time capsule of, let's say around about 50 minutes, because it's a longer episode again, it's an hour 20. But we bookend with Joel and Ellie. So let's say it's 50 minutes. For us to care so much about the characters, for us to care so much about their relationship, for it to end the way that it does, is is a masterstroke in the writing for the series. Um, so to carry on sort of working through, you know, Bill's a stockpiler, he's a prepper. He says to Joe later that he's a survivalist. He's got a house full of supplies. The first thing that he does when he realises that Fedra has sort of done one and left him to it is he goes around and he basically, you know, goes into Home Depot, takes everything that he needs. He goes into other stores, takes everything that he needs from there really sort of sets himself up. He's got petrol, gas, alcohol, more supplies than he could possibly need. He's got his own generator, and this is the sort of development of Bill's town, even though realistically in the series it's really only a street. Later on, Frank refers to it as the street, but uh, in the series it's very much known, as, in, in the game, sorry, it's very much known as Bill's town. Now, we jump forward to 2007, so the idea there being that Bill has managed to survive for four years on his own, off his own back, with the resources that he has in a house, very, very comfortable living, much more so than Joe and Tess got in the in the first episode, uh, making very, very nice meals for himself. You know, he's, he's sort of, he's, he's, he's ultimately prepared, isn't he? He's one of these guys who, you know, I think a lot of people in the media might sort of, laugh at people who are prepared for the apocalypse and have maybe got a bunker and things like that but this guy's showing maybe how it should be done uh if you're going to go down that route and so bill's sort of so, fortress of solitude if you will is very much intact but it is potentially disturbed by the emergence of frank now frank in the game as me and ollie mentioned last week is an entity who is there but we don't see much of him he you know, they refer to Bill and Frank, they refer to, you know, we're going to go to Bill and Frank's, we're going to go to Bill and Frank's, we're going to go to Bill and Frank's. And then when we eventually get to Bill, Bill doesn't know where Frank is. When we finally see Frank, Frank has killed himself because he um, became infected, he left a note for Bill, all that kind of stuff. Whereas this really sort of expands that story, expands that development of both of the characters. So, um I, I really enjoyed the development of the characters in that when they go inside, you know, Bill begrudgingly allows Frank inside. He feeds him. Uh, he sort of welcomes him in, you know. He, he sort of, Frank at that point is getting a little bit of a sneak peek. And the the really sweet scene of them two at the piano, um, and I, I, I wrote a quote down in my notes, um, I think I'm going to love you for a long, long time. And it was at that point, were the episode title hit me because it's called Long Long Time and I thought, oh yeah, this now makes sense. Frank makes his move uh, and then we begin to see the development of the relationship. The, it, it's, there, was a, there was a line in the sequence where Joel and Tess go around to eat where Bill says something along the lines of mine as in he's referring to Frank so it's almost like you'd sort of like nowadays go, my partner, my husband, my wife, whoever, my my significant other, my better half, whatever. But the fact that he's sort of gone mine and then Joe has essentially agreed with them, it's, it's almost sort of feeding into this world that's happened where people have ended up in companionships almost. They've ended up in relationships. They've ended up in you know, these sort of like close knit, again, companionships where they're having to trust this other person in order to try and survive as best as possible. Now, 
there's a bit in this in the scene where um Bill and Frank are in bed together where Frank says to him, like, have you done this before? And Bill says, like, once a very, very long time ago with a girl. So then you be, you begin to question the sort of societal societal construct around sexuality, whether Bill was in a position to be honest with his sexuality at that point, probably not. Uh, and then this has sort of allowed him to, I wouldn't necessarily say explore that a little bit more, but I suppose be truthful to himself, because at the end of the day, he's hiding from nobody else. This guy's turned up, this guy's attracted to him there's no one stopping them from having a relationship. So it kind of develops from there. We then jump forward ahead three years, you know, at this point, the bickering, the bickering like an any old married couple would be bickering because Frank is trying to strip away Bill's paranoia. There's all these things that Bill set up where, um, you know, things are going to be kept out and all that kind of stuff. And all Frank wants to do is he just wants to put his attention to something because that's what you do if you love something, you put your attention to it. And he wants to invite Tess and Joe for dinner and they're like, what, you've done what? But again, it's, it's all that sort of, not foreshadowing at this point, but Frank is trying to open Bill up a little bit in the idea that should the infection go away, you're eventually going to have to face some sort of real world. You're going to have to face some sort of form of a real world again where you're going to have to interact with people again. So he's trying to sort of get him used to that along the way. I really enjoyed the bit of foreshadowing that we got with Joel and Tess, where Joel's trying to warn Bill about the Raiders. And he's sort of saying that that fence won't hold. Um, I can get you some, you know, aluminium f- spools to put around it that will sort you for life or the rest of your lives. But ultimately, it sets up that thing of like, you know that they're going to come. You know that the Raiders are going to turn up. And again, in the game, the Raiders are extremely prevalent. They're, they're, they're always around. They just rock up anywhere. They're just trying to steal things from other people. We jump forward again three years later. Uh, we got a really sweet moment with Frank where he's he's managed to, um, he, trades, he trades Joel and Tess some seeds for one of Bill's guns. And he says, don't worry, it's only one of the small ones, but it allows him to grow some strawberries. And just the, 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 the sort of little giggle that Bill gets when he finally eats a strawberry again for probably at that point, what is going to be the first time in at least 10 years. I've lost track of how many times we've jumped forward now. Um, but again, it's that really sweet moment between them two. And then immediately juxtaposed or thrown the other way by the fact that the Raiders appear. And once again, it's that horror that has been brought upon the people trying to survive in this world and the people trying to survive post-infection were, yes, the the infected are around. And yes, if you see an infected and you hear that noise, you think, oh, they're in danger now. But at the same time, you can't trust a human. We're at a point where we can't trust a human. So these people are trying to break in to steal what Bill and Frank have got. So Bill's, you know, fighting back, he gets injured, all that kind of stuff, they start taking care of each other. And then sort of beginning of an emotional soccer punch, which the series is going to continue to do. Uh, You fast forward to the present day, quote unquote, present day, 2023, and Frank's time is coming to an end. Um, They've aged together, but I suppose everybody has an expiry date, you know, and uh, they, you, you see Bill looking after Frank, Frank's in a wheelchair, you know, he's cooking for him, he's, he's getting him into bed and all that kind of stuff. Bill wakes up the next morning to see Frank already out of bed and in the chair. Frank jokes about it and says, it took me all night, but I got into the chair. Bill's, you know, a little bit sort of annoyed with him. He's saying, oh, why have you, you, know, why have you done this? You know, you, you, you get get back into bed. You can't be doing things like that. And then Frank just sort of says, no, no, it's, I, I promise you I'm going to stay up today because this is my last day. This is I've decided this is the last day. This is the day that I'm going to die, essentially. And, you know, they sat downstairs. Bill is just in floods of... T- Again, the Nick Offerman performance in this in this episode, like, he's just in tears. He's in bits. In, in the development of his character from beginning of episode to end of episode is massive. And that's all down to such a nuanced performance. Barry Martlett's... Barry Martlett... Murray Bartlett's... Um, stoicism in this bit where he started just saying, this is it, this is the end, you know, I've got the, you You were the thing that I lived for, you know, and ultimately I've now decided that this is what it's going to be so what we're going to do 
is we're going to go to this store. We're going to go to the boutique. You're going to wear what it is that I pick out for you. And we're going to get married. And you're going to cook me a lovely dinner. Uh, and then you're going to give me these pills. And you're going to put me in bed. And, you know, that's that's sort of like his, he set the start of the day. Um, and then we we get to a point where it's it's it's, it's like the, it's the Romeo and Juliet ending. It's the you know how many pills did you did you put in there or with the bit with the pills in the bottle? Um, and Bill says, yeah, enough to sort of take down a horse. Bill calls Frankie's purpose, and you 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 are forced to read between the lines at that point. Um, Joel and Ellie turn up, and the gate and and, and this takes us from. Um, Frank's note to Bill in the game becoming Bill's note to Joel where, you know, there's an envelope and a key. The envelope says to whoever, but probably Joel. There's a very extensive piece in it that Ellie reads out. Um, they say, you know, he's giving them codes for things. He's saying, take what you need, take what you want. You know, you can take the car. He set everything up that he could put, that Joel could possibly need, including, you know, the things that he needs to sort a car battery out. Um, very emotional, but again, where they get to the bottom of the ladder and he says, use it to take care of Tess, because obviously Bill doesn't know what's happened to Tess. And then this this is the first point where Joel finally takes a moment. Joel steps outside, he steps into the front lawn, and very, very tiny moment, but to grieve. And there are certain points, certain camera shots and sort of specific jump cuts where I'm sort of looking at, his face and I'm thinking, is he is he crying? Is he upset? Obviously he was upset, you know, what how much emotion is he showing on his face? So again, there's that sort of almost dual nature, almost sort of contradicting nature where he's fighting himself of like not wanting to show too much emotion, but then really having to show emotion. At the end, at the end of the day, we've been in this pandemic for um what is it, 20, 20 years now? And you would assume that for at least 10 of them, Joel and Tess have been together. So that person dies. You can't just start to go, huh, move on. You know, he needs the time to show that emotion, but he's not going to do it in front of Ellie because for some reason he feels like he's got to put this wall up. He's got to put this sort of stoicism up. And we begin to see the sort of breaking of that here. Um, Ellie takes this moment to finally get a gun. Uh, which she hides from Joel, so Joel doesn't know that she's got it. And then they drive away listening to Rhonda Ron, uh, Linda Ronstant, uh, which is another song that I have downloaded since watching and may end up on circulation as much as the Depeche Mode song from episode one has ended up in my circulation. Um, but this this is a very good episode. I think it was, again, I'm intrigued to see what other people think about it because I know that, like for instance, I'm going to watch it again on Monday. Um, when with, with my wife, I know that Ollie's going to watch it at some point. I know that my mum's watching it. I'm intrigued to see what all of these people think about the sort of diversion of the narrative, um, whether they end up being sold by Bill and Frank's story. Um, I'm intrigued to see what my brother-in-law thinks about it, who has played the game. Um, and, you know, he, I know how much he cried at the uh, the first episode, so I can only imagine that it's going to get worse here. Sorry, Matthew. Um, but I am I'm intrigued to see what the reception to this one's going to be because I think it's an extremely well-written piece of drama and it essentially involves two characters who we are introduced to and then we say goodbye to by the end of the episode. So it's it's a very bold move, I think, for it to go that way. I at least expected two episodes with Bill because in the game he kind of stays with you for a little bit um, and I thought they could have easily bridged that over two episodes, but the fact that they sort of completely diverted the focus away to just focus on Bill and Frank, um, it's something that they're going to do again with Sam and Henry when we get to that point, and it's something that they're going to do again when we finally meet Riley, um, but it's intriguing, it's bold, but it works. It's very, very well done. Um, so thank you very much again for listening to this one, watching this one. Uh, so those are my reactions to Long on Time. Next week's episode, uh, I do I do I do I do the title? Do I tell you the title? Nah, we'll leave it till next week. Um, but again, the, I, I believe that the titles have all sort of like come out now, but I'm not going to be the one to sort of forward 
forward spoil anything here, I suppose. Uh, you can see that I'm reading them now. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we'll leave that until next week. So, again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, come back this time next week for my episode four reactions. Um, I hope you're all enjoying it. And if you are, let me know what you thought in the comments below. See you next time.